Hello there, Johannish Whiskey Lore, and time for another whiskey tasting. And today I am jumping back to a whiskey that I got to taste for the first time out at the actual distillery in Denison, Texas. And um, interesting place to go to, really fascinating history. I talk about it, the phylloxera epidemic that basically was wiping out the French wine industry and how a man from Texas actually helped save the cognac industry, and then talked to the uh, to Robert Licorice, who is one of the founders of Iron Root. So you can find that interview, didn't video that one, so that's only on the Whiskey Lore, the interviews podcast way back. So I have done a tasting of this one before. This is uh, the 20C edition. While I was going to do a tasting on this, I also wanted to get into a little bit about aging whiskey and the history of aging whiskey because I have a uh, I was on Ralphie's channel the other day and he was talking about the new American single malt regulation and I got into a little back and forth with a viewer who was like um, I don't like these new regulations because there's no age statement there's no age requirement and so I just did a video talking about where age statements came from on uh, the Patreon channel, uh, whiskey, patreon.com slash whiskey lore, uh, and went into the whole background of where this concept of aging whiskeys comes from. Because what's interesting is uh, it really was actually in Scotland the rules came about because David Lloyd George, who was the prime minister in 1915, wanted to destroy the whiskey industry. And what better way to destroy the whiskey industry than to force the little guys out of business by bringing a three-year minimum requirement. So it had nothing to do with the quality of the spirit in terms of why that rule came about. It was because they wanted to put the whiskey industry out of business and it sort of backfired by making whiskey a whole lot better than what, um, you know, it took a lot of the cheaper whiskeys off of the market. I say that, it didn't really totally because there's still blended whiskey that was out there. Uh, but this three-year age uh, minimum, um, I think it's a misnomer to think that that came about because it just made better whiskey. That was not the purpose of that three-year uh, age statement. And in fact, in the United States, the only reason why we have age statements is or, or how age statements developed was all because of taxes. Because the longer you could keep it in a bonded warehouse, the longer people would keep their whiskey because they didn't have to pay tax on it until they took it out of the warehouse. And so that created an incentive to make older whiskeys. So thank you tax system for your assistance in getting better whiskeys in the United States. But now we're looking at the American single malt and we're saying, wait a second, you know, why are we not doing an age statement in here? Well, first of all, we're, do we're not doing an age statement because we're not trying to recreate scotch here. S Scotland makes scotch. They do a great job of it. We're in a different country. We can have different rules. The other thing is, is that Scotland, while it does have some varying climates between, say, the Shetland Islands to the north down to the borderlands with England and maybe the coastal lands as well, you're getting different kind of weather patterns. Still, your weather is fairly within a range. Whereas if you go to Alaska and you distill, or you go to Houston and you distill, or you go to Miami and distill, or you go to Denver and distill, you're gonna get all sorts of different types of climate. And another thing is a lot of these distilleries may use different size barrels because the regulations say 700 liter is the largest, but it doesn't give a minimum to the size barrels that you can use. And so let's say you're somebody that wants to fast produce whiskey. And I've had some really great whiskeys out of smaller, like 35 or 30, 20 uh, gallon barrels that, um, you know, basically they are aging them for a shorter period of time. They're getting more wood contact faster. And sometimes that distillate is just good enough 
that you don't really need to have it age for a long, long period of time. And so this is what, uh, because you can use different varieties of barley. Um, one of the misnomers for the term single malt is that it requires one type of malt. And, and this confusion has actually led to some distillers that I've seen call something triple malt, which is not a thing. Uh, if you have three different types of malt, malted barley, uh, and you put them all together into your, um, your mixture of grain, it's still a single malt. The word single relates to how many distilleries it came out of. It came out of one distillery, a single distillery makes it a single malt. So you can have many different styles. And if you do, then what you can find is that you're going to say, we'll take um, one of my favorite American single malts, postmodern, and the fact they're using uh, cherry wood smoked uh, barley in there, chocolate malts, those sorts of things, you're gonna get different flavors in there that are going to make it very interesting. And maybe it doesn't need to sit in a barrel as long. So. I am definitely one who, when I first got into whiskey, I was obsessed about age statements. And as I've gone along, you can see it in the Scotch whiskey market now, there's a lot of non-age stated stuff out there. Why? Why worry about that? Why make that such an important piece that you're going to hamstring all of these distilleries by saying you have to age for a certain amount of time? You can make bourbon in this country and have it just flow through a barrel. It just has to be inside of a container for a moment, and that's it. And it can be called bourbon as long as it's 51% corn. And um, so that's why they came up with the straight designation. Now, the idea of the straight designation is that basically if it's under four years old and it's called straight, then somewhere on the barrel or on the bottle, they have to put that how old it is. And this says 32 months. So it is a straight bourbon whiskey. It could say a Texas straight bourbon whiskey if everything's come from Texas. And um, so you have that designation. So what I'm saying is if you are a person who's making an, a 100% malt whiskey and you um, need an age statement, then don't make an American single malt get it labeled as a straight malt whiskey. And if you do it as a straight malt whiskey, then you can define how long it has aged for and get that age statement on it. Solved, <laughs> right? And I have seen straight malt whiskeys. Now, the thing is, is that it may confuse people because a straight malt whiskey only has to have 51% uh, malted barley in it. And so um, that can lead to a little bit of confusion. Whereas when you see single malt, you know it's 100% malted barley. But again, I think that's just in terms of what you put on your label. Be transparent about it. Let people know, you know, what your mash bill is. And um, that can solve that problem there. So I am doing a nosing and tasting on this. I know I've kind of run off the rails on talking about that, but it was really interesting to me because regulations you know, regulations can be changed, as the Irish are finding out now with pot still regulations. They were written years ago, and now they've discovered that they actually are a little bit too limiting and that they don't fit the historic uh, grain styles that were used and, and grain bills that were used. So they are working on changing those rules, and you can do that. So maybe if they find out these American single malt rules are a little bit too stringent or not stringent enough, then they can go back and change them in the future. But right now I am drinking a straight bourbon whiskey that is 32 months old, and I know that because of the regulations. This is a uh, 115 proof, so it's 57.5% ABV. Cannot tell you what the mash bill is on this because they actually have blended together a bunch of straight bourbon whiskeys from different barrels. And so it has a lot of different heirloom corns in it. Uh, it, it has a yellow dent corn in it. And um, it has a little bit of rye in it too, I believe. I'm not sure on that. 
Uh, but anyway, they, they pulled it from a lot of different barrels. And so this is kind of a big old, uh, it's not a blend, but a big marriage of different whiskeys. And so on the nose, this is a whiskey that I get a lot of um, aging characteristics in for something that's 32 months old. This is why I say things age quickly in the heat. And I'm pulling in a lot of leather notes from this. Now, the other thing is, too, is that the age statement has to be the youngest whiskey that's in the blend or in the marriage of whiskeys. So there could be some older whiskeys in this, and 32 is just the youngest, but there is definitely some older character to this. There's also a kind of a molasses note that I pull in. And a little bit of a, maybe a strawberry jam coming out of it. So it's got some really interesting notes for a bourbon. And this is one thing that I will tell you about Iron Root. Is that they are big fans of cognac and armagnac. And so they play with some barrels that are going to give some much more fruity characteristics to a, uh, to a bourbon. And this is where this is what I love because this is this is what I want to see out of bourbon. I want to see bourbon really expand the profile uh, as best they can by whether it be the types of of grains that they're using or by the barrels they're using. There's also a little dusty note in here of like a I want to call it like a sweet baking spice of some sort. Hard to put my finger on though. Cheers. Mm. So this is a flavorful, power-packed little whiskey there. Get some grain notes coming in there, along with a little bit of an ethanol note that comes in there, and then that, that berry note. It's one of those whiskeys that, ooh, it gets very peppery on the finish, too. Um, strawberry jam and pepper on the finish actually very interesting maybe a little bit of a, of a cocoa note in there as well let's see what happens actually let me get a little bit more vicious on the water there and see what happens there's a little bit more of the um wow yeah a little bit more of the dark fruit now starting to come through a little bit And a lot of old cooperage. It smells like an old whiskey warehouse. It really does. Water doesn't hurt it at all. In fact, it actually emphasizes the chocolate note a little bit more. Pepper is a little lighter on the, on the finish. And... Um, it may weaken the, the finish just a little bit, but, um, but not, not bad. I like it at full strength because I love the, the body in this whiskey. And it kind of uh, thins it out a little bit uh, just on the finish. It's, it's good on the um, first hit of the palate, but then it kind of lightens up a little bit after that. Oh, I like this whiskey. It's, uh, I really want to taste some other stuff that those guys are doing. Uh, they have one called Icarus that is a, uh, has a, some peat involved in it. One of these days, maybe I'll run into a bottle of that. I hope so. I feel like I'm a million miles away from those guys, so it's a little hard to get some of those specialty products. And I know uh, I've got friends like uh, the Bourbon Texan on Instagram, and he, you know he has made quite a few pilgrimages over to that distillery to pick up some of their special bottlings when they come out. So if you're in... North Texas, definitely a distillery to go check out. Hope you enjoyed this. Uh, give me a uh, give me your thoughts on Iron Root Republic if you have tried any of their whiskeys before, and uh, give me a like if you enjoyed the video. If you learned something along the way, make sure to check out my Patreon page, Patreon uh, slash Whiskey Lore. I'm putting a whole bunch more historical content up there. I'm gonna start putting pictures from my distillery visits and all the rest up there, and you're helping to support the channel. 
by going out there, and I definitely appreciate when you do that. Until next time, cheers and slan java. Mm. I like it.